Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's uh, May 22nd, 2018, and today I'm going to go through weather modification companies, corporations, universities, associations, and uh, military groups. Uh, basically everybody who's controlling the weather, at least in the United States, if I made it uh, worldwide, this would be the longest video in history, but eventually we'll add all that too. I'm going to have to do a lot of translating to pull that off. But um, we're going to go through the, the article today. Um, of course, on weather, um, climateviewer.com, you can check out all of my work. This is a front page right here, all of my frequently asked question pages and all of that. But today uh, we're going to be doing this... Uh, directly on names and addresses um, get right down to the nuts and butts of who's controlling the weather um, you're not going to find this anywhere else and of course everything that I'm doing is uh, fully open source and free of charge and I appreciate my patrons over on patreon.com slash climate viewer um, thank you for your support I hope that you guys will come continue to support my work uh, it's kind of unique and you're about to see that so Come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and scroll down to the resource section or just click right here. And what you're going to see right past the news vault and my uh, article 10 technologies to own the weather today is the most important four articles on my website. Um, they sum all this stuff up. People, patents, programs, and laws. We did programs last night. Pretty epic video. Got a great response from that. And today we're going to do the people who are controlling the weather. Um, this is probably the most important part because really if you want to know who's screwing with your weather, who's making basketball size hail and flooding your hometown, uh, this is where you go. So you click on that and it's going to take you over to um, climateviewer.com and the title of the article is Weather Modification Corporations, Universities, and Derivative Traders. So that's the stock market. So. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly tonight, um, and what I want you guys to understand about this is I have not included geoengineers. Um, I'm going to do a special update on that in the near future, um, and this is mostly who's controlling the weather in America. Um, like I said, I will be branching out to do Russia, China, and the rest, as many as I can find, um, and I've already got some reports on here on that. We'll go through that as well. So. Here, let me zoom this up to full screen so you guys can see everything. And uh, this is a, this is what we use from the Weather Modification History logo. It's a uh, Collier's Magazine, 1954, Weather Made to Order. Um, this is also what's on the cover of Jim Fleming's book. Um, pretty, pretty epic image there. Man with a joystick controlling the weather. So. Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody, no, no, nobody does anything about it. Charles Dudley Warner said that. Um, it's often attributed to Mark Twain, but there's your original source. And the truth of the matter is, in today's modern society, everybody's trying to do something about the weather. So we're going to start with the military and federal government. Um, these are the facts, and you can't argue with facts. So. First up, United States Air Force Phillips Laboratory Geophysics Directorate. Um, they said that they wanted to use an airborne carbon black delivery system to be completed by 2003. This was also mentioned in the Owning the Weather 2025 papers. And you can also see that the U.S. Air Force uh, is a member of the Weather Modification Association. And their address is NASIC DACA, attention Gregory T. Marks at 4180 Watson Wave, Florida, um, and that is Wright Patterson Air Force Base information right there. So yes, the Air Force is doing it. If you click the link up here at the top, you, it'll take you over to Weather Modification History, and you can actually see a Freedom of Information Act request on that, um, where they say weather modification using carbon black. I'll zoom that up as well so you guys can see it. So, and that's a Phillips lab and they give the same reasons that were in the Air Force 2025 papers and it's carbon black dust delivery systems. Pictures of that right here, you can see the FOIA and there's the second part of the FOIA. That's what's in there right there, their project plans and how they're gonna pull it off. 
And you can see over here on the Weather Modification Association, right there is the NASIC DACA. That is Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So they are a member of the Weather Modification Association. Kind of hard to argue with that. Okay. So next up, we have the United States Naval Warfare, Naval Air Warfare Center's Weapons Division at China Lake, California. China Lake, California is the home of the cloud seeding bombs that were used in Operation Popeye over Vietnam. And to this day, um, China Lake, California is where the U.S. Navy does its weather modification uh, technology research and all that. So you can see that once again, I have a FOIA. If you right click that thing, come over here to weather modification history. FOIA reveals U.S. Navy weather modification program still active at China Lake and it's under the non-lethal warfare um, or the joint non-lethal warfare directorate, JNLWD. And it's uh, pretty, pretty creepy stuff. Um, it says right here, successful completion of the proposed effort and the follow EMD programs will give the U.S. military a viable state-of-the-art weather modification capability again. I know of no countermeasures. Because you can't really stop the weather when it's used as a weapon. There's no defense against weather weapons, and that's why they are bigger than nukes. They are, um, World War III is going on right now, and it involves weather warfare. There is nothing we can do about it um, except for raise hell, send FOIAs, and demand accountability. And that's exactly what I'm doing over here on um, climateviewer.com. You can go to my NMOD page where I have the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, and that's to bring accountability even to the military. And finally, right here, U.S. discusses future of weather warfare despite NMOD ban. This was uh, Dr. Arnold uh, Barnes from the Phillips Lab, and he goes through a series of uh, presentations following the Owning the Weather paper. Owning the Weather in 2025 was written 1995 to 96. In 1997, uh, Dr. Arnold Barnes Jr. Um, from Phillips Lab at a joint Army uh, Air Force uh, symposium said, let's do this thing and for all the same reasons that we're in Air Force 2025. And the list goes on and on. Oh, well, you know, NMOD's going to get in our way, but, you know, in light of the the Air Force position needs to be reevaluated in light of the past 19 years of scientific advances, in light of advanced weapon systems, which are more environmentally system sensitive, and to prepare against technological surprise. So even though weather warfare was banned in 1978, they don't give a damn because A, Russia's doing it, B, China's doing it, and C, who else is doing it? So whether you like it or not, the militaries of every country, the, at least the major ones around the world, are involved in weather warfare. And that's just, you know, mutually assured destruction, I guess. Um, and they go on way down here. Weather modification using carbon black to muddy roads, flood fields and rivers, destroy crops, things like that. And they go on to say, increase cirrus cloud cover. So that's making chemtrails, people. That's making clouds using carbon black from the military. And they say they want to do that to deny visual satellite and high altitude reconnaissance and decrease light levels for nighttime operations. So there you go. Why would the military want to make clouds and block out the sun? Oh, they do it because they're not blocking out the sun. They want to block out spy satellites because if you're going to roll your UFO out on the tarmac at Area 51, you might not want the Chinese to see that. So there's one reason, and during the Iraq war, um, if we're going to go beat up on a bunch of Iraqis and we have night vision, they do not. We can make clouds all night long and make it darker. Um, that's straight from the military's mouth. So that's the United States Naval Research, uh, our Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division at China Lake, California and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, right off the gate at the very top. Next up we have... Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, where geoengineering was invented. You can see the article on that. Can Dr. Evil Save the World? A Geoengineering Tale. And it's about uh, Edward Teller, Lowell Wood, and Roderick Hyde, and how the current push for geoengineering solar radiation management came from Lawrence Livermore National Lab, a weapons um, lab. And Dr. Evil is the guy who pushed it. 
crazy stuff. Pacific Northwest National Lab, they're involved in the Silver Lining Project or the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, whichever you prefer to call it, but it's sea salt spraying boats. And uh, you can see the lit right there, Pacific Northwest National Labs. So na there's your two national labs involved in geoengineering. Oh wait, here's a third, Savannah River National Laboratory. The article is Chemtrails, Calmatives, and Terrorism. And if you scroll down to right about here, let's see, microspheres for micro worlds right here. And it says, what looks like a fertilized egg flows like water and is stuffed with catalysts and exotic, exotic nanostructures and may have the potential for, of making the current retail gasoline infrastructure compatible with hydrogen based vehicles of the future, not to mention also contributing to arenas such as nuclear proliferation and global warming. So these are glass balls made of nuclear radiation that has been, um, denuclearize I guess or who knows but regardless they're hollow glass spheres and this is the quote of the century right here then they go on to say that it can be used for things like energy independence nuclear medicine nuclear deterrence and safeguards and global warming again there's a second reference to that but this is the one the particles, consisting of a very fine special form of glass, porous walled glass microspheres, would be able to absorb a certain amount of carbon dioxide and would reflect sunlight away from the Earth. The overall goal of the task is to understand and evaluate the implications of deploying porous glasses as an agent to reduce global warming. This is putting nuclear glass balls in jet fuel to do solar radiation management and carbon sequestration same time from savannah river national lab uh, moving on down the list of course the national oceanic and atmospheric administration noaa is involved in weather modification because you have to report all of that to noaa so a lot of what you're about to see comes from these uh foias that i got and i made a, a google fusion table out of it. NOAA reported weather modification activities 2004 to 2012 and you can see a very lengthy list of who's involved in it like Atmospherics Inc, Barkin International, Barkin Fog, Fog Operations, um, on down the list. Desert Research Institute, you can see right here, operator is the person who modified the weather, sponsors who paid for it, state of Nevada. Um, so we're going to go through those as we progress through this, but you can see all of those NOAA reports right here for 2004 through 2012. I will be getting the rest of them from 2013 to present soon. And of course, you know me, I got a map of it. So right click this little guy, come over here to climateviewer.org. And on Climate Viewer 3D, you can see all of those weather modification projects in 3D. Um, so yeah, you just click on each of the little dots. It'll tell you it's the same reports that are in the spreadsheets, except it looks a hell of a lot cooler in 3d. All right. So back to the article and we kind of move on down the national science foundation. We conclude that initiation of large scale operation, operational weather modification programs would be premature as they said, but right here, if you see who's funding solar radiation management geoengineering studies, the National Science Foundation is the largest by far, followed by the European Commission, ESP, EPSRC from the UK, NERC from the UK, and the Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research, Pfizer, that is Bill Gates. So these are the people funding geoengineering. These are the authors writing it, Ken Caldera, Alan Robach, David Keith, Ben Kravitz, Peter Irvine. Um, the list goes on. Um, and this is from a paper called Mapping the Landscape of Climate Engineering. Next up, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Yes, the USDA is involved in weather modification. Surprise, surprise. They actually electrified water and sprayed it from an electrostatic sprayer over Texas in June of 2017. You can see the actual interviews um, from the Texas Weather Modification Association's licensing division. And you can see the information on that right here. Um, this is the actual presentation itself. 
and right about here halfway through you can see this dude invites the guy who used to work for Monsanto up to speak I think he do where is he at right here so he comes up and he sits for a minute but regardless his name is Wesley Clint Hoffman and uh, the USDA deleted his page so I went and found a new copy of it but Wesley Hoffman um, used to work for Monsanto and he has things like aerial application technology for sustainable crop production and deployed war fighter protection research program um, development develop improved timing and application technologies to reduce exposure of pesticides to honeybees hey man thank you for caring about the bees while you spray all that Monsanto shit all over the sky but regardless um, you know he does rotary wing nozzles and electrostatic sprayers so these are what you see if you if you live in the south and you've ever seen one of these mosquito mosquito spray trucks that's what they use to spray electric water over texas u.s department of agriculture funded it and got a um, exemption to do just that moving right back over here um Next up, U.S. Bureau of Land Reclamation. They do pretty much all of the weather modification on the West Coast. Um, lots of information on that. Like the Walker River Basin Cloud Seeding Project. Um, but Reclamation, Managing Water in the West. That's your federal government people, and they do fund uh, geoengineering and weather modification. So next up, U.S. Department of Commerce. That's like a duh um, so you can come over and check that out, but just go through the list. There's all the different research papers over on the commerce um, page. Um, you know, great stuff. JCW Ion Ional Hurricane Research Project. You know, papers from going way back. Um, anyway, Department of Commerce. And let's see what's next. Department of State. Of course, the State Department's involved in that. Link to that, collaboration with the State Department, National Academy of Sciences, and NASA on that link. And now we're going to go to the states. So state by state, I'm going to break it down real quick. State of California, Dudley McFadden from the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, SMUD. If you pay your power bill or water bill to SMUD, um, they actually modify the weather themselves. Uh, Pacific Coast Forecasting, um, Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E, they modify the weather. Atmospherics Incorporated, RHS, RHS Consulting, a.k.a. Skywater Ventures. Um, you know, you can go through these and look at them. Everything is linked up, and you can see right here, Full Service Weather Modification Company specializing, specializing in winter cloud seeding. Um, pretty fascinating crap. That's just California, Santa Barbara County Water Agency source and map. Now, this is where I got my map source. This is what it looks like. That's an AHOGS. It's a flare tree. So this is a cloud seeding flare tree. Come over here to climbviewer.com, click on Santa Barbara, and it's going to fly you down there and let you see the locations where those cloud seeding generators are. And that's what these little fire dots are. These are the cloud seeding generators. And again, there's the Santa Barbara map and the link where I got the thing. Summary of operations for winter cloud seeding programs in the upper Santa Ynez drainage in southern, southern southeastern Santa Barbara County in the who's Huasna Alamo drainage in northern Santa Barbara and southern San Luis Obispo County's water year 2015. My God, that's a mouthful. They make these things so long. Everything in the government is just so wordy. Um, but regardless, you know, click on the little eye next to the thing. You see the same thing right here. And that's what your flare tree looks like. So when they're burning, they look like this. And there's multiple ones of these on each of these flare trees. And they're all over Santa Barbara, California. Boom, there they are. Next up, back over to here. State of Colorado, the Colorado River Municipal Water District, Aero Systems, and Denver Water Department. Um, they're doing the Central Colorado Mountains River Basins Program. Um, you can look at all the links to this. I had to update some of this because it's been deleted. Uh, but weather modification permit applications. Um, see, all the names and addresses of who's screwing with the weather all over America. Uh, come over to the map. Same thing over here. Central Colorado Rocky Mountains program right here. 
and you can see they got a lot of those so there you go um one sec back to the map is that even the right one central collar yeah that's the right one Boom. close that go there do that yes bam so there's your cloud seeding generators all over colorado right there back to the map or back to the thing scrolling down this is where i got the locations from yes i put this picture into google earth and went and put a little fire dot on each of these locations and you can see right here star equals manual purple equals a manual and green equals remote remote being it's remotely operated so there's two of them up here that are remotely operated all the rest of these there's literally some usually some old man who walks out there and lights a thing on fire and these are orographic cloud seeding generators they're, they're on the ground they burn them all day long um, mostly in the winter time scrolling back water enhancement authority grand mesa once again we have a map for that as well boom 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 come over here go to grand mesa colorado and right next to it is another set of cloud seeding generators and where they intend to uh, do their seeding and as you can see right here i still got the weather modification stuff up that is from the FOIA thing, and it says right here, 2008, January to June, 170 square miles by Water Enhancement Authority. Links and details on all that. That's who's screwing with the weather just in Colorado. Pretty creepy stuff. So we're already getting kind of covered in cloud seeding generators. Let's move on down the list. State of Delaware, Link. Um, and that will take you to my other article, which is going to be my next video, weather modification laws in the United States of America. So some of these, I haven't got a lot of details on them, but you can come right over here. We're doing Delaware. So you scroll down until you go past this part right here and you'll see federal laws reporting acts and then California right there, Colorado, Delaware, and there's the Delaware, um, dot gov code. Um, which is a Senate bill on their weather modification reporting and licensing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, State of Idaho, Boise, Idaho, Board of Control, High County RCD, um, Cloud Seeding Steering Committee out of Clark County, uh, Ohio, um, excuse me, Idaho, <coughs> Mud Lake Water Users in Idaho, Madison County, Idaho, Water District number 34. You actually see the water master's report on that, how much they spent on it. And finally, all of this is managed by the Idaho power company. Wouldn't you know it? I got some great pictures on this. So we might as well bring this image up in a new tab. I clicked the wrong button. Let's go back over here. Um, to the thing and I'm open image in a new tab. Let's blow that up. So this is a remote cloud seeding generator. It is, operated by satellite or um, by cell phone or internet um, so it's got a, a solar panel burning head ignition coil all that nitrogen pumps down here um, propane tanks down here and the silver iodide solution tanks right there that's where the silver iodide is so propane mixed with the the freaking silver iodide and some nitrogen and it's burnt out the top and then over here on the other side, we got the redneck version, the manual cloud seeding generator. There's your uh, World War II vet. This guy's hat on, um, walking out there and actually lighting it on fire. And it's just a propane tank. The silver iodide's in this box and they burn it. So this is um, what's called snowpack augmentation. This is how they burn cloud seeding material from the ground. By the way, there's acetone in that bottle also. You got to love that gotta love breathing all that stuff so here's the idaho, idaho powers cloud seeding projects all those green dots and stuff that's where i got this map from that i'm about to show you and as you can see right here it says generators ip co operated so the pink dots are owned by idaho power company and operated by idaho power company so if you live in idaho and you pay your power bill um why don't you give them a call and tell them to stop 
screwing with the weather. <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be some real activism as opposed to all this bullshit I see online where people just gather and say we want to stop all the geoengineering and actually don't do a damn thing about the people paying for it. Um, and then the green dots are generators, non-IPCO. So, and then over here are flight paths. So wouldn't you know, of course I mapped that out as well. Um, let's leave that on and go over here to Idaho Power Company cloud seeding generators. You can see those right here. So there they are. Now I can go over here to the satellite view if you guys want to see it and you can actually fly down to the ground and like see where these things are located. Um, but regardless, I'm leaving it black so it's easier to see. And then over here are the flight paths and you can see that here's the mountain ranges that they hope to put the snow on top of. And here's all the cloud seeding generators. And what you know, there's the NOAA reports. Upper Payette River Basin, operator, Idaho Power Company, sponsor, Idaho Power Company. So they pay for it and they do it themselves. This is from 2012 right here. And it says 938 square miles worth of weather modification. This is who's actually screwing with your weather people. Um, you can't find this anywhere else. I hope you'll continue to support my work. Um, moving along, say to Kansas, Western Kansas Groundwater Management District Number One, State of Kansas Weather Modification Program, Kansas Water Office. The Kansas Water Office spent $156,000 on weather modification contracts for pilots to release silver iodide into clouds to reduce crystal formation, despite the fact that in 2003, scientists from the National Academy of Sciences concluded there is no scientific evidence that it works. More on that in just a minute. Um, and that's from a governor's budget report, fiscal year 2010, page 328. Cloud seeding gets a failing grade. Mm. So despite the fact there's no efficacy in this, as the scientists like to put it, this is not provable that it's doing a damn thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's screwing with all the weather on the East Coast more than it is locally. But whatever, um, they still pay for it. State of Minnesota, once again, linked to my weather modification laws article. You can see the laws on that. State of Nevada, laws links, programs links. Uh, Desert Terminal Lakes Program, Walker River Basin, and the Humboldt River Basin Authority has the Humboldt River Basin Cloud Seeding Generators, which are right here. And once again, we go back to the map. We fly over there. And here's what those look like. So now we've got all these cloud seeding generators, each along a mountain range. If you want to see those mountain ranges in 3D, just come down here and click 3D terrain and we can actually pop up the 3D mountains and everything. Um, and you can scroll in there and start to see that those in a magical 3D. Pretty cool, right? Man, let's get out of there. So anyway, now we've got a lot of cloud seeding generators on the map. This is starting to look a little scary because when you start to do that much weather modification, imagine what's going on over here where there is no weather modification. Everything over here, everything on the West Coast is affecting us on the East Coast. That's why we have these monumental blizzards. That's why we have these monumental floods, um, basketball size hail and all that stuff. So they, they do this because you can see how dry it is. It's brown. I mean, the whole damn West Coast is brown for a reason because people probably shouldn't be living there. But because so many people live there and so many people need water, they will burn these cloud seeding generators to cover mountains in snow so that in the springtime it melts and they have water. Next up, state of North Dakota. The North Dakota Atmospheric Resource Board has something called the North Dakota Cloud Modification Project. Um, links and details on all this. North Dakota Cloud Modification Project, right there, Ben. This is no longer a secret, people. In fact, the article that I'm showing you today is dated 2013 December. So I wrote this five freaking years ago, and I updated it over the weekend just to include all of the information from these NOAA reports. That's really the only thing that's new to this, and I added some stuff from my memory to make it uh, a little more lengthy. But regardless, this is who's screwing with your weather. State of Pennsylvania, linked to their laws. State of Texas, linked to their laws. 
There you have the Texas Weather Modification Association, the history of it, West Texas Weather Modification Association, Southwest Texas Rainfall Enhancement Program, South Texas Weather Modification Association, Panhandle Group Precipitation Enhancement Program, Southern Ogala Aquifer Rain Program, SOAR, Seeding Operations and Atmospheric Research, SOAR, old website, um, the Edwards Aquifer pays for it, Colorado River Municipal Water District, engineering uh wx mod wx mod is um did i drop that that's colorado i put that in the wrong see i was doing a lot tonight i'll have to move that up to the colorado section i don't know how that got in there uh i was moving stuff around way too fast obviously but regardless um Trans Pecos Weather Modification Association, North Plains Groundwater Conservation District has the North Plains Weather Modification Program. Links to all of that stuff, even the ones that have been deleted from the internet, I go and I get them back from archive.org so that you can see all of the fun and beauty that there is um, and find out who's really screwing with your weather. Um, up next, Powell Plant Farms. Yes, that is a farm that does its own weather modification. I looked them up. Uh, 10 to $15 million a year. That's a big farm. Damn, that's a big farm. Bel Belding Farms in Pecos, Texas. Also, they do their own weather modification. Go figure. Next, State of Utah. Alta Ski Resort and Snowbird Ski Resort. Yes, that is a fact. If you want to go skiing, you need snow. So they don't just make snowpack augmentation to put water on top of mountains so that it melts in the spring. Some people just want to ski on it. And Alta Ski Lift um, area and Snowbird Ski Bird um, Ski area. Snowbird right there. Um, link comes from directly here, you know, on this. It's pretty sad. Um, lots of weather modification. Everybody gets in it. Bark and fog operations on behalf of Delta Airlines um, at the airport in Utah would get rid of fog. Yes, that's a real thing. Fog suppression is what it's called. Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District, Bear River Resource Conservation and Development Council, Gunnison County, Weber Basin Water Conservancy District, Duchesne Water Conservation District, Cache County. These are people who have reservoirs, and when you pay your water bill in these water strap places, they take that money and they give it to somebody to modify the weather to fill those reservoirs up. And uh, now we're at state of Wyoming. Wyoming did something called the Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Program. Of course, I got a map of that. So we come over here to Climate Viewer 3D once more. And we click on that. Boom, right here. And there they are. Once again, there's links. There's a whole lot of links on that one right there. And the reason why is pretty simple. In 2012, I went to Ken Caldera. He's a geoengineer, if you don't know him. And I said to him, if they can't prove the efficacy of cloud seeding after 60 years of doing it, how do you guys ever propose to do geoengineering on a worldwide scale and pull this off? So that was in 2012. The very next year, the federal government and the state of Wyoming did this Wyoming weather modification pilot program to try to prove once and for all they know what they're doing. How'd they do? Well, they didn't do too well. And I did an article about that to laugh in Ken Caldera's face. Cloud seeding, gambling with your weather. Um, and this is dated uh, December 29th, 2014. And uh, editor's note right there, Ken, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> too funny. Um, but anyway, you can see right there where the, the to told you so and uh, the actual post where I told him so on his forum. It was called... Uh, we may never know how well cloud seeding works. Oh my gosh, that's just burn, dude. Burn, burn, burn. And basically, they, they failed. They failed freaking miserably. So how, how bad did they fail? Well, check this quote out. This is hilarious. Analysis showed that cloud seeding produced 3% increase in precipitation with a 28% probability that this re result happened by chance. That's science. Most scientists and statisticians wouldn't accept that level of uncertainty. So the Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Program failed freaking miserably. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Nice little video on that. 
data system and weather modification research or operations. This is from one of the weather modification. Um, anyway, sidetracking. Back to the article. So this Wyoming weather modification pilot program was a massive fail, and Ken had to eat some more crow. Finally, state of Washington linked to that. Um, laws in Washington. Really creepy law on that one, though. Might as well show you that. I think um, it's worth showing because this is this is bad. Washington State. If you want to modify the weather in Washington, here's the laws, and here's the exemptions. Do you want to know who's exempt from reporting that they're going to modify the weather in the state of Washington? The department, to the extent it deems practical, shall provide a regulation for exempting from license permit and liability requirements. Liability meaning you can't sue them if they kill you, tear down your house with a tornado, or destroy whatever. Um, these people. Research and development and experiments by state and federal agencies. Institutions of higher learning. That's freaking colleges, man. And bona fide nonprofit research organizations are exempt from license, permit, and liability. Let me say it again state, federal agencies, colleges, and bona fide nonprofit research organizations. Also, laboratory research and experiments, activities of an emergent character for protection against fire, frost, sleet, or fog. Activities normally engaged in for the purposes other than those of inducing, increasing, decreasing, or prevention, preventing precipitation or hail. I mean, son of a bitch, that's like everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why there's no accountability. There's no transparency. Um, that is exactly why I proposed something called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. I hope that you guys will support it because we need transparency and we need accountability. And that is exactly what this is. It is an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification. So please support my solution to all of this bullshittery that I'm showing you today. Um, back to the article way back here. Universities and associations, the World Meteorological Organization is seriously involved in weather modification. If you want to see who's modifying the weather worldwide, start looking through these papers right here. I just downloaded them all to climateviewer.com. Several of these that I pulled from the WMO's website were corrupted. I uncorrupted those PDFs. Shout out to the WMO. Um, so you guys can look through those. And when you do, they're going to look like this. Uh, World Meteorological Organization Program on Physics and Chemistry of Clouds and Weather Modification Research, Register of National Weather Modification Projects, the year is 2000, and when you scroll through these you can see who's screwing with the weather on a worldwide basis in big reports that look like this. List after list after list after list after list after list. These are all the countries around the world. Gotta love it. So. Dig into those, not gonna read you those. You guys need to learn how to read, please. Come over to climateviewer.com and read the freaking article. The World Meteorological has an expert team on weather modification. As you can see here, this is their expert team on weather modification. And the names and addresses of those individuals like Roloff, Brajun, Brew, Brunch, Day, Brunch, I never can for now. I tried again. I'm going to fail again. I'm going to call this guy and I'm going to get him to say his name like three times to me so I can quit butchering it. But regardless, um, who's up next? The American Meteorological Society Weather Modification Conferences. They have them every two to three years. And I attended the 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification. You can see my interviews from the AMS conference right here where I interviewed Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld, who talked about steering hurricanes and a whole bunch of stuff. So did William Cotton. He talked about steering hurricanes and uh, jet fuel doping and geoengineering. I interviewed Raytheon where they talked about uh, replacing all the Doppler radars with a phased array radar called sensor. It's similar to HARP or pave pause and AWIPS to how all of the National Weather Service um, forecasts that you see on your local television, they all come through an 
a Raytheon product called AWIPS because the National Weather Service uses AWIPS. Um, UCAR, University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, Naval Research Lab, Nikki Florio from BeHeroic.com. She's a fellow activist and my personal hero, Dr. Jim Fleming, the world's top historian on weather modification. Um, he wrote the book, che uh, Fixing the Sky, the Checkered History of Weather Modification and Climate Engineering. Um, and he supports my Environmental Modification Accountability Act as well. So please dig into those videos from the Weather Modification Conferences at the American Meteorological Society, who is seriously involved in weather modification. Hell, they have a conference I attended just this January. Next up, the Weather Modification Association link and corporate roster. Here's all of the companies that are members of the Weather Modification Association. I'm not going to go through them all, but right there in the middle is U.S. Air Force, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I interviewed Via Sala at the um, Weather Mod Conference as well. University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, um, National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR and UCAR are very similar. NCAR is the parent company of UCAR. They do the funding. Here's a creepy quote. Since 1996, NCAR's Rainfall Enhancement Research Program has received more than 95% of its funding from outside the United States, even though it's in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and they got the Research Applications Lab over there. That's where they do all their weather modification. North American Interstate Weather Modification Council, Desert Research Institute, the Institute of Atmospheric Sciences at the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, Desert, uh, excuse me, Indian State uh, Institute of Tropical Meteorolo Meteorology, American Society of Civil Engineers, Hebrew University at Jerusalem, that's where Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld is, the guy I interviewed, um, University of Alaska, shout out to HARP, um, Stanford University VLF Group, once again, shout out to HARP, um, Manchester University, Leeds University, Purdue University, University of Maryland, um, Manchester, Leeds, and Purdue, and University of Washington and Edinburgh are all involved in that silver lining project, marine cloud brightening thing with this with the funky sea salt spraying boats, as you can see here. So I put them all in there, lumped them together, but they're definitely into geoengineering. And then uh, University of Maryland, that's uh, Mr. Dennis Papadopoulos, who is the top HARP guy on the planet. Professor Papadopoulos at HARP. Um, you guys really need to look through this dude's publications. This is the source of my video, How HARP Really Works. Um, the guy is also the guy who proposed putting HARPs on boats, which is why they sold HARP to the University of Alaska they don't need it anymore they got harps on boats and satellites and trailers and all that stuff finally ending this thing out weather derivatives and event contracts if you never heard of a weather derivative this is betting on the weather on the stock market this is the chicago mercantile exchange cme group they're called weather products if you go over to their site right here weather products and they've got like u.s cooling days heating days European cooling and heating days. Well, that's not all they do. They also do hurricanes. And as you can see right here, after you go past the timeline, these are the, the sections, CME group hurricane contract regions. During Hurricane Sandy, a whole bunch of people made a whole lot of money on that damn hurricane slamming into New York because they got event contracts. So what's an event contract? Um, nice little article right here. CFTC requests public input on possible regulation of event contracts. And a lady named Andrea Psoris wrote in, you got to read this thing. Please take your time to read it. It is freaking epic. She mentions weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025 and all kinds of stuff like that. It's freaking epic. But regardless, she's like, look, man, this is some serious stuff. This can be weaponized and people are betting on the weather. You bet your ass they should regulate these things. So space weather modification. Man, she went there, dude. She went there. Harp's even mentioned in it. Um, so great stuff. 
Weather derivatives are creepy as hell because whenever you involve money and, and people, you know, trying to control the weather, uh, you, you can see how bad this is going to go. So right here, I've got a video on my YouTube channel. Hurricane Sandy puts spotlight on weather derivatives market. Uh, We've got Hurricane Sandy currently hitting a broad swath of the U.S. East Coast. Bringing... This video is dated October 26, 2014. It has 720 views. But it's about Hurricane Sandy and how they were betting on the weather. And they got a dude from CME Group who comes in here and he's like, you know, it's just, you know, people making money, you know, and stuff and stuff. Watch the video. It'll make you giggle. And this is the guy from the CME group um, actually explaining weather derivatives. Now the June 1st to November 30th hurricane season is closely watched because the storms are a threat to oil and natural gas interests in the Gulf of Mexico and agriculture in the south. We're talking a significant amount of the economy could be affected by these storms. Well, Tim Andreessen is managing director of agricultural commodities and alternative investments. <laughs> he bit his lip. Anyway. Um, weather derivatives are super creepy. They have companies like Guaranteed Weather that are involved in this. And they say things like, hey, does your business need weather protection? Like what? Like what are you talking about here? Weather risk. Weather in the news. Uh, snow protection. Things like that. Uh, let's look through here. Weather risk management. <clears throat> God, just, I mean... At the end of the day, it goes like this, people. If you have a $15 million corn crop and Mother Nature could come along and destroy it, you might want to get some insurance on that. So you go to companies like Guaranteed Weather or any of these other you know, ones that are listed here, um, and they will say, look, man, we will insure your crop for this amount of money. And you pay a whole bunch of money to them, and guess what they do? To ensure that your crop doesn't get destroyed, they go give that money to the weather modification companies like North American Weather Consultants, Weather Modification Incorporated, um, you know, and those people do hail mitigation. So they cloud seed to make the hail smaller. But what if you're cloud seeding to make hail smaller and the guy right next to you is doing cloud seeding to make it rain? Uh, what happens? Um, I think you can imagine. So everybody's got their hand in the cookie jar and they're all doing it for cash or water or whatever warfare. But regardless, that's a lot of people. Here's a timeline of how weather derivatives and stock markets got involved with each other. You've probably seen this on many websites. Um, but regardless, that's the story and I'm sticking to it. Finally, here at the end, I have my cloud ionizer companies. Um, this is from a paper I did in 2014, cloud ionization, um, electric weather modification, and laser guided uh, weather control. Acquiesce Drake International Global Rain Project, that's at acquiesce.com. Their website's been deleted. I pulled it up on, uh, on a freaking Wayback Machine. Australian Rain Technologies, Ionogenics, um, that's a PDF. Evergreen Aviation Super Tanker, this one's pretty fascinating right here too. So let's just go through this real quick. Here's the Acquiesce Global Rain Project. They talk about using weather resonance technology to steer atmospheric rivers. Um, you can check out a couple articles on cl um, climateviewer.com. Just simply go uh, up here to the top, go to archives and click on cloud ionization right here. And when you go to the cloud ionization section, you'll see the thing about the electrified water um, with Hurricane Harvey. And uh, the UAE is using electrified drones and how Texas stole California's rain. This is the article about Acquiesce um, and Cyblu getting a permit in Texas to steer an atmospheric river. You've got to read it. And all of these um, companies come from an article I wrote called Cloud Ionization, Electric Rainmaking, and Laser Guided Weather Modification. And it's based on something that David Kaczynski wrote called The Blue Gold Rush and the Water Wars Using the Rivers of the Troposphere. So rivers in the sky, um, they're called atmospheric rivers, and they want to steer them with things like these cloud ionizers and ground-based electrical signals. <clears throat> 
you can't make this up there's mateo systems weather tech uh nice little picture of their huge freaking towers next up weather tech's got a brand new website i just found and it's like the most advanced technology to enhance precipitation this is the future so cloud seeding with silver iodide is old school it's been around since 1946 ionization is the future and they basically use ions like so and it's just electrons dude and the electrons use all the dirt and uh, pollution that's in the sky already to make the water stick to it so i mean if you're gonna do it at least this isn't a poisonous chemical but you're still changing the electrical properties of the sky um and you're still changing rainfall and all that it's still weather modification which i oppose um, but that's their little diagrams and they're pretty proud of their stuff. They've come, come up with this new fancy website. Uh, hey, no chemicals, pure negative ions, which actually make people happy. Don't you know? Um, and clean operations based on solar energy versus cloud seeding, um, which sucks. So they're, they're trying to make the argument that this is much better. Australian rain technologies, similar idea. They have the Atlant system. Um, it's a triangular shaped ionizer thing. Well, interestingly enough, I saw this. Waste isolation pilot program, um, pilot plant protects infrastructure with metal palm trees. Wait for it. WIP has cloud ionizers on top of it. Four years ago, somebody sent me a photo of one of these umbrella things, and I said, I'll bet you you know, $20 that that, what you're looking at right now, is a freaking cloud ionizer. And the reason I said that was because over here in my cloud ionizer article, I had this little photo. And what does that look like to you? Doesn't that look exactly the same? New method, old method, cloud seeding. New method, ion generation. And of course, the WMO says ionization methods should be treated with suspicion because they don't believe this stuff works either. So that's that's the big picture on that. WIP is now using these uh, these things on top. There's a there's the photo right there. Oh come on, too too fast for me. Come back. I want to see it again. Come on, boom right there. Oh, they're so fast. There you go. So these things put off negative ions up on the top and they're actually using this as a lightning suppression system so that lightning doesn't strike the nuclear waste that's there and set out off an explosion which would kill a whole lot of people. But regardless, um, that's the wrong button. That's not my escape button. WIP uses ionization towers on top. So that's the i think we're pretty much through the list now let me go back and make sure but that's weather modification corporations universities and derivatives traders i have updated this article so that it has all of the names and addresses of the individuals who are taking money and modifying the weather i hope that you guys will share this article around because this takes all of the you know the mystery out of it so if you actually want to do something about people modifying the weather i suggest you start making some phone calls because now you have some places that you can call and uh of course all of this is available on a google fusion table that you can go through i have maps as well um these are the facts i'm sticking to it and this is my no fear porn zone i'm gonna arm you with the information and now it's on you you gotta you gotta be willing to act on this so if you guys are willing to get educated and educate others with some real facts, then we can put a stop to all of this weather modification. Ooh, we didn't even do the Carson Walker River Basin right around Lake Tahoe. Um, but that's all the weather modification going on on the West Coast in America. I do intend in the future to branch out to doing weather modification projects in Russia and China and everywhere else that I can find. So if you have any information on those, please send them jim at climateviewer.com. As I mentioned earlier, everything I'm doing is free of charge. If you can hit me up on Patreon um, with a monthly support, I would greatly appreciate that. If not, you can always feel free 
to come over and buy me a coffee on PayPal. I really appreciate that. As you can tell, I'm up late playing and uh, having a lot of fun, you know, saving the world. Uh, my daughter calls me Batman, um, even though I'm wearing my Superman shirt tonight. Um, guys, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you staying up late with me and watching this video. And I will mirror this on YouTube and put it over on climateviewer.com so that people can see this for in perpetuity. And uh, just remember, when you're, when you're dealing with scientists, when you're dealing with senators, you know, they're going to tell you to put your tinfoil hat on. And the best way to tell to tell them to screw off and not have to deal with that is to send them articles like this. Come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and the four articles right here listed, people, patents, programs, and laws, just those four alone are enough to guarantee that they're not going to be able to just discount you and tell you to shut up and go away. They're going to have to take you seriously. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so I hope you'll do, um, you know, come over to weathermodificationhistory.com, check us out, check us out on Facebook, support the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, and go through the 200 year history of weather modification. Um, you're not going to find this stuff anywhere else. Once you know, and knowing is half the battle, we can change this situation and we can bring transparency and accountability to the world of weather modification with your support. Um, love you, mean it. And just guys, remember attack ideas, not people. It's important. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work. So come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.